Understanding the Accelerating Expanding Universe. Hello and welcome to my second video in the series which explains the nature of dark energy and dark matter. My introductory video on YouTube was called Dark Matter, Dark Energy, Gravity Explained, the universe we now live in. Please view that one first as it leads into this one. In this video I'm going to show you how dark, dark energy directly enables matter to accelerate in the accelerating expanding universe and I do this without exhorting to any cosmological crutches like quintessence, the cosmological constant, negative gravity or the quantum vacuum. But before I start, if you like my message to the world of science, please help me to reach other viewers. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'm recording another four on cosmology after this one. So to begin, it was not until the launch of the Hubble telescope that it became evident that there is another force at work in the universe which is causing the accelerated expansion of the universe. Until that moment Newton's and Einstein's laws worked quite well. The discovery of dark energy has changed everything for over 60 years I waited for some kind of proof that Newton and Einstein were wrong about the mechanisms driving our universe. I knew they were wrong and I, I had the logic to prove it. The reason they are wrong is that Newton and Einstein and everybody since has told us that our universe is a gravity momentum universe and that no other force is necessary to make our universe work. But now, with the discovery of dark energy, we know that the universe works quite differently and that another force is required, driven by 68% of all the energy in the universe, to make our universe work as it does. What you have to understand about Newton's and Einstein's universe is, it, is that it is crucially a gravity-momentum universe. In their universe, from the moment of the Big Bang, momentum alone has driven the expansion of the universe. Their theories cannot accommodate an accelerating, expanding universe, which requires a propulsive force, not only to counteract gravity, but to accelerate matter. So in order to fix their broken science, the mainstream reinvented the cosmological constant to accommodate the acceleration of matter, otherwise their math did not work. It was Einstein's mistake and it is still a mistake. And why is it a mistake? Well, it still doesn't work, not in the real universe. And you will see why if you stick with me in this video. The cosmological constant is only one of many competing theories like quintessence, negative gravity and quantum vacuum and nobody is confident that they have got it right. And this is not surprising because they cannot get it right when they have no idea at all what dark energy is, other than a mathematical formula. But dark energy is not just a mathematical formula. It is a working component in the universe machine. So, if a theory requires matter to have a magical property which can't work in reality, then it is a fantasy and it should be discarded. Mainstream science has a big problem with semantics in cosmology, the word which causes anxiety and to be avoided at all costs is the word propulsion. So they use words like negative gravity to describe propulsion. I mean, if something is negatively gravitationized away from something else, you have got to say that it is being propelled away from it. Then we have the cosmological constant to explain why galaxies are accelerating away from each other. So theorists magically inject dark matter everywhere, instantaneously, throughout every part of the universe, so making the universe appear to be an inflating gas bubble. Is this a joke? And this also, incidentally, at the same time, trashes the unmodified Big Bang Theory which presumes that the mass energy of the universe has remained constant from the moment of the Big Bang. 
Mainstream theories have one thing in common. They admit that dark energy causes the accelerating expansion of the universe. But they can't agree on how it does it. And this has caused the proliferation of theories. The missing link, which they don't seem to be able to forge, is that dark energy converts into the force propelling matter and therefore accelerating it. So getting back to basics and avoiding the use of any caveats, negatives, the cosmological constant or assorted quantum theories, if one object is being accelerated away from another object, in plain English, it is being propelled away from it. If a constant force is applied to the object in the absence of gravity, the object will accelerate. And that is exactly what is happening. So why not say it? Propulsion. Propulsion. Dark energy converts to propulsive force and that propulsive force is propelling matter which is causing the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. Up to now I have said that dark energy is being harnessed to propel matter. So how does it do it? Not only is energy required, but it has first to be generated and then it has to be converted into the force which is applied to the object. So how is dark energy generated? Well, you can say the same for gravitational energy. How is it generated? I can't answer that and neither can anybody else. But what is fact is that wherever you have matter, you have gravitational energy which converts into gravitational force. The same applies to dark energy. Where you have matter, you have dark energy, and dark energy converts into the propulsive force propelling matter throughout the universe. Dark energy does not have to be everywhere in the universe, as is required by mainstream science for their theories to work. It merely has to be everywhere that matter is, because it is matter that is being propelled, propelled in the accelerating, expanding universe. Mainstream science seems to think that 68% of all the energy in the universe, dark energy, is nonchalantly drifting about, completely disconnected from and not interacting directly with matter, yet mysteriously has the power to inject energy in the space between galaxies to accelerate the growth of the space between them, to make galaxies appear to be accelerating away from each other in the accelerating expansion of the universe. What a mouthful! Does this make sense? Is it hogwash? I think so. Perhaps you need more convincing, so I will continue. Dark energy supposedly passes through matter without affecting it because it does not behave gravitationally. Well, why should it behave gravitationally when there is another vital way that dark energy can directly and measurably affect matter without obviously doing so? It is this. Its vital unrecognised role in making the universe machine work is to counteract the force of gravity by self-propelling matter. Just like gravity is the attractive force fundamental to matter, dark energy is the propulsive force fundamental to matter, which, working with gravity and counteracting it, gives us the stable universe we live in. Just in case you don't get it, dark energy has been measured to be visibly propelling matter and is not only propelling it, it is accelerating it. And like gravitational energy is generated by matter, dark energy is generated by matter and causes it to be self-propelled. That is how the universe works. So if matter were to have an additional fundamental property, that of propulsion, then the accelerating expansion of the universe can be simply and perfectly explained without the need for any magical, theoretical conditions, caveats or constants. 
It also means that the mass energy of the universe can have remained constant from the Big Bang no matter how infinitely large the universe grows because no additional input of energy is required. Now that dark energy has been proved to exist, matter has the propulsive force necessary for the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. If you are struggling with the idea that matter can both have the property of gravitational attraction and of propulsion, then I will try to explain it. Everybody knows that matter exerts gravity. Why? Because we experience it in every waking moment and we see it in the way solar systems and galaxies work. So nobody can tell us that gravity does not exist. And we know that, that the gravitational force that matter exerts is extremely powerful relative to its size. Here is an example. If you represent the Sun as having a diameter of one mile, half the length of Central Park, New York, it comfortably holds dwarf planet Pluto in orbit at a distance as far away as San Francisco, over 2,600 miles. This effect is in spite of the fact that the gravitational power reduces by the square of the distance between objects. But what doesn't add up is where does the gravitational energy come from to do all this gravity? How does matter generate it? It is a huge amount of energy in a very small amount of matter. Nobody knows the answer to this simple question. And that tells me we don't know a great deal at all about matter. And we don't know what gravity is and how so much gravity can be generated by so little matter. So who is to say that matter, amazing matter, should not also generate dark energy, the energy for the self-propulsion of matter? The math proving the reality of the accelerating, expanding universe is done. Astrophysicists and cosmologists now have to face up to the fact that matter itself is doing the accelerating and they must apply their math to it. If matter didn't generate gravitational energy we wouldn't have gravity. If matter didn't generate dark energy we wouldn't have the accelerating expanding universe and we wouldn't have galaxies and we wouldn't have planets revolving around stars. So now you have it. Gravitational energy and dark energy are fundamental properties of matter and it does not matter how or where matter gets the energy from or how it generates it. Dark energy is the component of matter which enables the self-propulsion of matter. Gravitational energy is the component of matter that enables the tractor force of gravity. And one more thing I would like to point out something that astrophysicists have confused in their computation of the mass energy of the universe. They have failed to take account of gravitational energy. And this is because they are confusing gravitational energy with matter energy. They talk about matter energy cancelling out dark energy. Well this is nonsense. The two energies that almost cancel each other out are dark energy and gravitational energy, but they don't equal zero. They don't equal zero because of the proven fact of the accelerating, expanding universe. So the total of dark energy in the universe is greater than the total of gravitational energy in the universe. And to wrap up this video, I leave you with the thought that the inclusion of matter in the equation for the total of mass energy in the universe is flawed. Matter is the generator of both gravitational energy and propulsive dark energy. Including matter in the mass energy equation would be a double inclusion and would be fundamentally wrong. The equation for the sum of all the energy in the universe comprises of gravitational and dark energies. But now, having come as far as this, 
I've been thinking that science might be missing an even more fundamental point, which could be that electromagnetic energy is one and the same thing as gravitational and dark energy. If this is not the case, then the energy equation for the universe must also include electromagnetic energy. If you are still with me, thank you for viewing this video. And if you would like to look further into other aspects of the self-propulsion of matter in the universe, then please visit my website http colon slash slash dark dash matter dot eu and go to the chapter on the galaxy halo anomaly.